Hello to the Reverend Bob congregation. Lynn Rogers here, and as you can see, I've cleared out the two cozies and all those blokes from the Rolling Road Centre. Why? Because I need to concentrate. Do you know why? It's the last of our tuning tips. Now, aside from turbochargers, the modifications we've looked at on the series so far have been pretty straightforward, and they haven't involved too much fiddling with the engine. But to get your car to do this, a bit of engine fiddling is what you have to do. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to get your hands dirty. Oh no, you just have to be a little bit handy with the old soldering iron. Now, to talk us through today's tuning tip is a rolling road expert. It's Bill. Hi, Bill. Hi, Lynn. You all right? Fine, thank you. Good stuff. Now, what is it that's going to give us a bit of extra power from the motor? Under the bonnet of this is a black box called an ECU. ECU stands for? Electronic Control Unit. I knew that, really. And inside that black box is a load of little chips. OK. One important chip is what we're going to take out and replace. OK, and what does that little chip control? The boost, the ignition and the fuel. All in one little chip? All in one little chip. So that's why you don't have to get your hands dirty? Correct. Fantastic. My kind of tuning tip. Well, unless everybody's been on Mars for the last few weeks, you'll be familiar with how the rolling road session works. We've just tested this standard 1.8 20 valve turbo Golf. And what we're going to do now is take out the engine management chip and replace it with a modified chip. At the moment, it's running at 152 brake horsepower. One, five, two. Bill, I'm not impressed. I'm sorry, I am not impressed. You're not. So, this new chip, is it going to give me a bit more BHP? What's it going to give me? 2530, Len. 2530. That's going to take me up to 175, yep, 180. Yep, yep. yep. We'll do. That's more like it, isn't it? Thank you, Barry. Well, Lynn, this is a computer that controls everything under the bonnet. In there is a load of chips, but there's one particular chip that we're going to change, and we'll make one hell of a difference to this car. OK, it's amazing that something that small has all that power. Yeah, yeah. I just don't understand it. Fine. So, I guess this is where the soldering iron comes in. Yeah, it is, Lynn, yeah. Right, so now we're going to swap our toolboxes and ramps for a worktop and a little puny microscope. Oh, I love it when he gets all clinical. It's not that clinical, Lynn. <sighs> Spoil sports. OK, Bill, then, yep. show us the next steps. Right, off with the lid. Now, what we've got here is a lot of chips. Each chip does different sends different information to the, uh, to the car. OK. But it's this one here that we're interested in today. Right. This controls the boost, the yep. ignition and the fueling. OK. So we're taking that one off. Yep. All these little pins here, we're all going to be taken and look, taken away from the board, either side, very carefully. If one of these doesn't come off perfectly, this could end up being scrapped. Really? So it's quite mm. a delicate operation. Yep. Are, are all the chips the same for, for each type of car? No. Different cars have different chips. You've got the plug-in module, which is no soldering. You've got the 28-pin chip. They've got the square-pin chip. All just all different chips for different makes of cars. Various different sizes. Mm. So it looks quite a delicate operation. It is. Microscope over there, yep, I see. Yep. And you've got a soldering iron yep. as well, so it's quite a tricky, fiddly yep. job. It takes a long time to get that off. OK, I don't want to make you nervous. All right. So I'm going to get out of your way. Thank you. Now, this is one modification that you really should leave to the experts. It'll only take one wrong move or a blob of solder in the wrong place and your new chip and the management system will be damaged. And that, viewers, is a costly mistake. So, with the old chip out and the new chip in, it's time to put the ECU back in the car. Here you go, Barry. OK, so Barry's fitting the ECU and that's got the brand new chip in, the yep. magic chip. What happens to the old chip? We always give them back to the customer, just in case they want to sell the car and it'd be standard, you know, put it back to standard. OK, and what about insurance? You know, for the new chip, it's going to give it a load more power. Is there any implication there? Should mm. we be letting our insurers know? Yeah, I would, I would say yes, always, yes. OK, better yeah. to be safe. Right, so what happens next? Uh, we'll start her up and put in the rollers. On the rolling road? Yep. OK, let's find out what kind of power increase we've got. Well, it sounded sweet enough, Bill, but do we have a result? 
184, break off, Paul. 184, 184. I make that a 32 break increase, am I right? Yeah, dead right. Fantastic power at our fingertips. So, how much dosh is this going to cost me? £440, including the VAT. 440 I call that a bargain. Let's have a recap on those little facts and figures. Well, you lot will be seeing more of Bill for some of the Reverend's Rolling Road challenges. But that's it from me for tuning tips. But don't worry, I'm not leaving the talk show. In fact, I'll be back next week checking out some very tasty feature cars. See you then.